Okay, this is our first collaboration that we have ever done as a channel, Thousands of Roots. Uh, Texas Boys asked us to drop a video that talked about homeschooling. So what we're going to do is 10 reasons why we homeschool and five practical ways. Five practical ways that we do it. So this is intended to be an encouragement. We're hoping to encourage others who homeschool and if you're considering homeschooling, we want to encourage you. This is not intended to slam or to trash on anybody who's not homeschooling. So it's not that. So if it feels like that at all, we don't intend it that way whatsoever. We are sharing our personal decisions, our personal convictions on the subject. 10 reasons why we homeschool. Number one, because we can. We live in an amazing state that has awesome freedoms that allow us to homeschool without any kind of regulations or anything. No testing, so we like Missouri. Good laws in this state. Yep. And honestly, when we were in Alaska, when we studied the nation on where we wanted to move, that was one of the big reasons why we chose this state. Mm -hmm. Reason number two is because we love being together. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Reason number three is because it gives us more time to homestead. There's no buses to catch, we don't have to try and trek the children different places. It gives us a lot of extra time and free time for homesteading. Yes. Number four, we enjoy Bible time and we enjoy reading the Bible together and so the Bible is our most important text that we use for homeschooling. Mm -hmm. So number five, more positive character development. When you think about the traditional uh, school, the biggest question I ask is who's going to be the main influence on that child? So there's like 30 children in the room and one adult teacher. Is that adult teacher going to be the bigger influence or are the peers going to be the bigger influence on your child? That's what scares me. Not that the teachers, we have some fantastic teachers, some awesome teachers in this country and in our public schools. There are some wonderful teachers. But I know when I was a child in public school, I was filled with the Dickens. I was a bad boy and I influenced my friends to do naughty things. So knowing that, and there's going to be at least one of me in every classroom, that's, kind of, that's pretty scary. <laughs> so <laughs> that's just not a good idea. This is part of character development. So Caleb, are you your brother's keeper? Yes. Really? How so? What, what do you mean by that? Well, uh, I help them when they need help with different things. And I try to help show them what's right and good. Mm -hmm. And just be a good example. As, you'll... As, as my oldest son, you try to do what's right and good and be an example of doing what's right and good, huh? That's fantastic. Okay, number six is development of interpersonal skills with all age levels. So all the way from I have friends that come over and neighbors that are my age or older gentlemen. I'm teaching my children how to interact with them. So one of the things that we're teaching our children is first impressions and how to even just say hi to adults. If you think about how important that is in real life, in business and whatnot. So here's something I'm teaching my son how to do to adults. Hi, I'm Kip. Hi, I'm Nicole. Nice to meet you as well all the way down to little ones and how our sons and daughters can handle little ones. And we can work on, we can watch how our children interact with these people and we can critique them and encourage them and teach them how to interact better, more politely or more respectfully or whatever it might be. 
Number seven is that our children are learning all kinds of life skills, uh, especially living on a homestead. There are everyday life skills coming up in multiple different ways, and that's cool to see. Number eight is time management and work ethic. Our children know that they need to do their chores and their learning before they get to play. And so that's just the rhythm that we have and they're learning how to do that better and better every day. Number nine is opportunities for problem solving. We have given each of our older children management responsibility over a particular animal on the homestead and so when problems and issues come up, it's their job to figure it out. And of course, we'll help them out, but we want them to learn how to solve problems and learn how to make things better. And often they'll ask me, what do you think about this? And so then we'll talk through it. And I won't just give them the answer. I'll often just ask them questions back. You know, well, hey, have you thought about this? Or have you tried it this way? Or whatever it might be. And I'm helping them develop those problem solving skills all the more, not just by throwing the answer at them right away, even if I do have the answer, which often I don't. We have to figure it out together. Mm -hmm. And uh, number 10, last but not least, is that we're able to give each of our children an individualized plan of learning. We're able to watch our children closely and see where their skills and abilities and interests lie and help direct them in that area. So it's, they're not all put in the same group doing the same thing. They each have their own individual um, skills. So that's what we try and watch for and help them and encourage them along that path. Critter attack! <laughs> okay, so now we're going to be moving on to the five practical ways that we do homeschool here on the homestead. And let me preface this by saying that on this homestead, we have six children. One of them is, is she five months? Five months. She's five months old. Our house is still under construction. The barn is under construction. All of our fencing is not done. The coops for the chickens aren't done. The area for the ducks isn't done. The area for the geese isn't done. The milking area for the cows not isn't done. done. <laughs> There's a lot of undones. <laughs> and I work full time. Uh, some weeks, very full time. Mm. And doing all that, keeping up with everything, keeping up with this guy. If you were just to keep up with this guy, you would have a full time job. <laughs> he is so busy. I'm not kidding. In a half hour, he could create two hours of work for you. Okay, number one is model and cultivate a love for reading and learning and if the children can love to read and learn then it's just going to happen whether you make it happen or not every single day the children are asking questions about things and learning in many many different ways and often we're getting online we're using google pants we're using mm -hmm. youtube or we'll pull out a book to answer their questions mm -hmm. um so try to do it in a variety of different ways. So it's a, it's a modeling from the olders down to the youngers in multiple different ways throughout the day of just that love for reading and learning. Yep. Hey guys, what you working on? A puzzle. Nathan, you helping them do a puzzle? Yeah. No, Thanks for helping them, Nathan. You're welcome. Number two is we simplify and prioritize the facts. There truly is no end to the knowledge that we could try and force into our, the minds of our children. And so we periodically uh, get together, Kip and I, and decide what are the most important things that we really want our children to know. Hey guys, it's early morning. Um, the children aren't even awake. The cows haven't been milked. But I just wanted to share a little personal story with you guys. Sorry about all the critters in the background. They're all wanting their food. Uh, just wanted to say, I was actually a credentialed California teacher for three years before having children, before starting to homeschool. And I really beat myself up about not teaching our children all of the standards that I learned when I was educated to be a teacher. 
but I decided to stop beating myself up and instead to value wisdom above knowledge. So now my goal is to teach purposeful facts that are going to help our children in real life and they learn those. We learn those facts together through real living and especially on the homestead. A lot can be learned every day on the homestead. Facts that matter. If one of our children is supposed to go on to higher education for some reason, then I truly believe they're going to have the ability when the time comes to get all the facts they need, to pass the tests they need to pass, to take the classes that they need to take. So don't stress the facts, just enjoy life. And like in number one, we said uh, to cultivate a love for reading and learning. Having a love for reading and learning will give them the ability to learn the facts when they need them. And they'll be facts that matter, not useless knowledge. All right, uh, practical way number three is that we make meal times count. Uh, with a big family and lots going on in the homestead, we stick to meals together. That's important to us. And so we utilize that time when everyone is together. We do all kinds of things at the table before everyone gets up and takes off. So it could be Bible uh, memory verses. It could be learning the 50 states. It could be multiplication tables. It could be anything. Lots happens at the kitchen table. Yes, indeed. <laughs> all right, number four. We are on a mission to minimalize the stuff. We live in a little house and don't have room for a whole ton of stuff. So I'm on a mission to minimize. What does that mean? We are trying to get rid of as much stuff that we don't need as possible because stuff often just takes up your time. In a lot of ways, less is more. And in the area of homeschooling, one way we're doing that is I've developed what I call air writing, or you can call it imaginary chalkboard writing. So we sit around the kitchen table and everybody's got their pretend chalkboard in front of them. And we do writing lessons using our pretend chalkboards and it's really fun. The children enjoy it. It works for all ages. So imaginary chalkboards allow us to do language lessons with all, without all the hassle of having to find sharpened pencils, a seat for everyone, papers for everybody. It's, it just knocks out a lot of hassle. They don't get the fine motor skills by using the imaginary chalkboards, but because they're doing the motions and the movements with their hand, the ideas are getting into their heads. And then each of our children have just a little notebook that they use as well for writing. And we do lots of different things in those notebooks, depending on how old they are and um, how far along they are in the process of learning. Okay, so curriculum, curriculum, curriculum. <laughs> I'm just going to leave some uh, links down below in the description if you're interested in some of our favorite uh, resources that we use after about 10 years of homeschooling. The more we get rid of things that are not necessary in our lives, including curriculum, including endless facts, including endless junk, <laughs> clutter, the more we get rid of those things and minimize, the more time we're going to have for each other. And so that's where we're that's where we're headed. We have a long way to go, but we're on the mission to minimize and to make life more simple so that we can enjoy each other more. Number five is a year-round flexible routine. There's a time and a season for all good things, but there's not enough time for all good things in all seasons. <laughs> that makes sense. So we have a very flexible schedule that changes with the weather, with what's happening with the homestead, and we're just constantly updating and changing how we do things based on the needs of our homestead. And uh, it's really great to have that freedom to do that. Mm -hmm. And based on the needs of our children. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, some days we do more homeschooling than other days. Mm -hmm. we, there's that freedom. Mm -hmm. Hopefully this encourages you. Obviously it's gonna let you get to know us a little bit better. Thank you for coming along with us on the journey that we're on. It, it is a beautiful journey. It is a beautiful life. It's very challenging at times, but that's okay. We just got to keep on keeping on. Thank you for watching. Please share, like, and subscribe. Have an awesome day.